So let's look at a couple more examples of using the Pythagorean theorem to find missing side lengths in a right triangle. So remember, these triangles have to be right triangles. They have to contain a 90 degree angle. And I've written down the Pythagorean theorem that the relationship between these side lengths is that the square on side A plus the square on side B is equal to the square on side C. So when solving these problems, we just need to label what A, B, and C are. And remember, A and B are the legs of the triangle that are next to this right angle. And it doesn't matter which we call which, we can call this A, and we can call this one B, or we can switch that. Like I said, it just doesn't really matter when dealing with the legs. But the hypotenuse, the long side of the triangle, the one opposite the right angle, this has to be called C. So now that we've labeled these, let's start plugging them into our formula here. So we have A squared, so that will be 1.5 squared plus B squared. That is X in this case, we have X squared. And this is equal to C squared and C is 2.5. So when squaring these numbers, since we have decimals, we could use a calculator, we could multiply it in long form here, or you can ignore the decimal and then add in two decimals later, since notice we have two total and it'd be the same for this one as well. So we have 15 times 15, which is 225, but then moving that decimal back over, makes this 2.25. So this is 2.25 plus x squared. And we can do 25 times 25, which is 625, and then move that decimal two places back over since each factor in the product will have one decimal. So this will be 6.25. But like I mentioned, you can just use a calculator for that if you have one. Now to finish solving this equation, we want to solve for x squared, so we need to cancel out this 2.25. We will use subtraction for that. And rewriting it over here, we get that x squared is 6.25 minus 2.25. So the decimals will cancel out. 0.25 minus 0.25, that's 0. And 6 minus 2 is 4. Now to finish solving this, we need to cancel out that square so we can take a square root of each side and the square root and the square cancel and we just get the square root of four and what number multiplied by itself gives us four well that is just two so x in this case is simply equal to two so let's do one final problem here and I'll again just write down our Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is C squared, where A and B, these are the legs. So maybe we can label this one B and this one A, it doesn't matter. And the long side, the hypotenuse, that is C. And you might notice this from the intro video. This is one of those Pythagorean triples. In fact, it's a multiple of the three, four, five right triangle. Everything is just multiplied by three. So if you recognize those patterns, it can save you time from having to actually compute these, but it's also good practice to use this theorem to actually calculate what the side is. So A, that is 12, and we're squaring that. B is 9, and we're squaring that. And C squared, well, that's X squared. So 12 squared, that's 144. 9 squared is 81. And if we add these together, we get 225. So what number multiplied by itself gives us 225? So we're taking a square root of each side to cancel out the square. And we know that the square root of 225 is 15. Since 15 times 15 does give us 225. So like I mentioned, this was a Pythagorean triple since the most basic one is the three, four, five right triangle, but you can also notice when you have multiples of this. So if you double everything, or if you triple everything, you will end up with these 
other Pythagorean triples, these whole number values for the sides of a right triangle. So if you have familiarity with these, you can often solve these problems a little bit quicker without having to do this. But ultimately, you will gain this familiarity by practicing this using the theorem repeatedly.